So I'm just gonna put this out there. It is raining right now. I just put these bottle babies out like um, two hours ago. And one got into the electric fence and died. Electrocuted herself to death. Uh, I, <laughs> the only thing that I guess I want to say is after something like that, all I want to be is in something like this. Like just real feel the work of God. Rain coming from the sky, which we've been in a drought. Feeling connected to him after tragedy. It's, it, there are no words. <laughs> Farming is so hard. And time and time again, I am humbled by it. Like, I thought I did everything right. And I didn't. I came up short. I don't know. My phone's getting so wet, so I just want to put that out there. This is where I want to be. Not to punish myself, but to just feel alive after shitty situations. Well, in case anyone was wondering what we do with our dead lambs or anything that dies on the farm. We let nature take its course, so we try to get them as far away from the actual herd or flock. Um, that way coyotes aren't attracted to them, especially with the, uh, the lambs right now and the puppy. I want to make sure that I get her as far away as I can. So we're on the other side of the property. This is just like a little gravel pit that we have. Um, it's starting to grow back new grass, but... Have her here, we always say a prayer over them and, you know, ask God to help us do, do things better the next time. <laughs> I feel like every time we like apologize to the sheep too, but um, yeah, it really sucks. I, uh, I don't take it lightly when they die. Um, I don't know, I take it very, like real responsibility that they're entrusted. I I have their lives entrusted in my hands and like I want to do the right thing. I want to raise them um, on this farm the right way and the way that God would want it to be done. So we will just try our best and um, yeah, go from here and Try not to let it happen again. I don't know, moving forward, what we're going to do with bottle babies. It has not really worked out for us very well. Um, and then if we're going to scale up to like 500 sheep eventually. I don't know. I don't know. I need I need to talk to some people like that are larger scale sheep operation people and see if the numbers even make sense. We brainstormed of like buying another milk cow or even like buying raw milk from a dairy farm close to us and um, trying to feed them that, like make our own um, milk replacer after we give them colostrum um, because like the nicer milk replacer is super expensive. And I don't know, it's, it's hard. Like, I don't know, they're easier than calves in a way, but they're hard because they're like three times a day, if not four at the very beginning and then um I don't know it's like 90 days of full baby with you <laughs> and with four other kids I just can't have that commitment so and sheep and or and cows and all that it's too much on us so we're gonna address that moving forward and see what what we want to do I put I left the bottle the other bottle babies out there they seem to be doing fine I put them in that new paddock and so hopefully they stay with everybody but this one had jumped over the fence and was in the new paddock and was just trying to get back with everybody else which is why it's so heartbreaking because I was like I don't have time to deal with that right now she can stay in the other paddock eat the nice grass and then I will come back which is what we've done time and time again you know 
you always like have those kind of weird situations, but I haven't done it with um, sheep netting and with bottle babies. That was my downfall there. So, anywho, I just thought I'd share all that. So, okay, lighter videos to come, crew. So, we'll see you in the next video, guys. Bye.